And now, what's my line? Brought to you by Stop It Spray Deodorant. Poof, there goes perspiration. Poof Deodorant Body Powder, the body powder you spray. The Nest Shampoo, the new flowing cream shampoo. All in the first truly functional cosmetic containers. Far easier to use. All created by Dr. Jules Montagnier, the famous cosmetic chemist. Time now to enjoy What's My Line? And now let's meet our What's My Line panel of well-known personalities whose lines you already know. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, our favorite publisher and author of the very funny bestseller, Good for a Laugh, Mr. Bennett Sir. Thank you, Dorothy. On my left, a very fabulous young lady who's about to add the starring role in a new Broadway play called Mile High to her other achievements, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you, dear. And on my left, the very attractive humorist who has just returned from a successful trip to Miami, Florida, Steve Allen. Thank you very much. And on my left, a uh, young man who has just returned from a very successful trip to Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> One of the top news commentators, moderators in the business, Mr. John Daly. Steve, you had me worried for a minute. Good <laughs> evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line, presented by Stop It. Once again tonight, some guests have been good enough to come and join us and bring with them some interesting and, we hope, unexpected occupations. The whole purpose of all this, to give my friends on the panel a rough time of it and to get some prizes for our guests. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later in the program. But now to start things rolling, it's time for the experts to meet our first challenger, whose job they've got to spot. So would you sign in, please, sir? William H. Stevenson, is that right? <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Stevenson, first of all, would you tell us where you're from? Red Bank, New Jersey. Red Bank, New Jersey. Right. Well, will you take a small banked turn here and go down and take a look at that old panel? They'd like to see you a bit better. Just walk down in front of them, please. May I lift your hand, please? <laughs> <laughs> Both of them, he does. <laughs> well, Mr. Stevenson, you come on over here and sit down next to me. <laughs> and on the basis of this fine talent that you have and this continental touch, the fact that you're from Red Bank, we always give the panel at this point one free guess as to what your line may be. We'll begin the free guesses with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Well, the Red Bank is very confusing now. I, I thought that possibly he was a European title. I was going to guess a Viscount. Mr. Sir. Well, he's obviously a professional ladies' man. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, he probably teaches court manners to Americans that are going to the coronation. <laughs> Mr. Allen. I saw him nibbling on, uh, <laughs> on Dorothy's uh, diamond ring there. I think he's a jewel thief. <laughs> I'm afraid nobody has it right. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. Stevenson. At the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. But the panel is going to have to dig for this one. <laughs> now, <clears throat> Mr. Stevenson, the rules are very simple. If you come in just a bit closer, uh, every time you... Closer to this. This is the, the platform department here. Every time you give the panel a no answer, it costs them $5. We keep the record up here. Ten of these no's, you have won the game. See? We give them one last bit of help. You don't mind. Mr. Stevenson is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with the, Mr. Allen. Mr. Stevenson, is there a product of any kind connected with what you do? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it a useful product? Yes. <laughs> uh, might I ever have come into contact with it? <laughs> that seems it's to be possible, a... Steve. <laughs> that seems to be a funny question, but I don't know why. Is there something uh, in any way 
peculiar about the people who come into contact with it? <laughs> well, it's possible that when they come in contact with it, there's something peculiar about them, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Is this peculiarity anything uh, physical? Uh, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's possible that uh, you would consider that uh, mm -hmm. some of the peculiarity was physical. By any chance, do these people who come into contact with it or whatever it is, uh, do they ever have difficulty in seeing properly? <laughs> Am I correct in assuming this man is not another monocle maker like we had last week? You are correct in assuming this man is not a monocle maker like we had last week. Uh, are, are some people ever forced to use this Thing, uh, uh, frequently? Well, that's also an interesting question. Uh, <clears throat> are, are some people forced to use this frequently? What, what would you say frequently meant? Well, I don't know. What would you say it meant? <laughs> <laughs> well, would you say um, once a week was frequently? Well, make it easy on yourself. <laughs> well, all right, yeah. You say once a week. Thank you. One time, <laughs> nine dollars is still down. <laughs> well, when people come into contact with this product, uh, do they do so because of a specific circumstance or need? Yes. Uh, this isn't something that you'd have lying around the house. Uh, no. Yes, this is not something you have lying around the house, no. Uh, would this thing be likely to be in your possession most of the time, this product or object that we're talking about? No. No, I don't think so. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sip. Hmm. Mr. Stevenson, is this product on any chance come under the heading of uh, medical or uh, some medicinal purposes, something that might be used in a hospital? Mm, to, to achieve a medical end, you mean? No. Uh, thank you. That's three down, seven to go. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Ms. Benson. Is this product, or has it ever been alive? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Four out of six to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, if I were a regular user of this product, would I in any way look different than I do now? <laughs> That's right, Steve. To the degree that you are not a regular user of this product, uh, your appearance now is somewhat different from what it might be were you a regular user of this product. Yes. <laughs> and I don't even know what I said then, so you carry on from there. Thanks, I suppose. Um, is this a, a commercial product, something you might buy in a department store or a drug store? Thank you very much. That's five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is this object solid rather than liquid? Is this What's object solid rather than liquid? Yes. Uh, and you use it upon human beings? Yes. Or in conjunction with human beings? Yes. And after you have used it on them or with them, they are somehow different? Mm. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't say they're different in any way. I'm going to give you one more minute on this. It's a very tough one. I want to warn you, panel, so don't feel hard about uh, still having to fight so hard. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Well, Mr. Stevenson, is there any electricity used in, in, in uh, manipulating this product? Yes. It is. Mm. Do you, you uh, plug this in to something before you use it? Plug it into a switch, an electrical switch. Possible. Possible. And then the electrical thing is applied directly to the person of the, of the victim. Is no. Right? No, it not a not? No, that, uh, that makes it seven down and three to go, and the minute's about up. This is a real tough one, panel. Uh, Mr. Stevenson makes drunkometers to test intoxication. They are bought by police departments and uh, <laughs> other sundry outfits. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Stevenson, since you won by default, you win the full prize, and thanks a lot for coming to see us. We had a lot of fun with it. Thanks a lot. Good to see you. Sir. Good night. All right, panel. Let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Stephanie. Is that right? Very fine hand, if I may say. 
Is it Miss or Mrs. Miss. Radzinowski? It's Miss. Miss Radzinowski. Nowowski. Excuse me. Would you tell us, first of all, where you come from? Pritchardville, South Carolina. South Carolina. Well, it's nice to have you. We've got uh, no Southerners over there, but we've got some nice Northerners, and they want Good to meet you. To so will you walk over in front of them, please? Do you mind if we call you Miss Stephanie instead I'd of the last name? <laughs> Thank you. They're automatically doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Miss Radzinowski, will you come over here and join me, please? And on the basis of this brief visit that you have had with the panel, we give them at this point um, one free guess as to what your line may be. We begin the free guesses, as usual, with Miss Kilgallen. Well, she looks musical to me. I think she plays a bass fiddle. Ah, uh, Mr. Sir. I think she was a member of the Free Polish Embassy. Miss Francis. I think she plays a woodwind instrument. Mr. Allen. Well, she's from Carolina. Her name is uh, Rod Wojnarowski. <laughs> I, uh, I think she's a South Pole. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Now, I'm afraid I can't give anybody 100% on that. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Miss Radziwonowski, and at the same time, we will tell them what her line is. But, panel, you've got to work. <laughs> All right. Miss Radziwonowski, I think you know how the rules go. Every no answer costs the panel $5. We keep the record up here, nice steady record. Ten of these no's, you have won the game. The usual last bit of help. Ms. Radziwonowski is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Mr. Bennett, sir. Miss Stephanie, you gave me permission to call you that. That's right. Do you work for a profit-making organization? No. A one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Then do you work for some branch of a government? No. A two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. <coughs> uh, is there a product connected with what you do? Yes. I see. Do you, uh, in connection with this product, Offer services to people? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. I think so, yeah. uh, when the purpose uh, of the uh, transmission of the product is uh, one of service. I see. Do you sell this product to people? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is it a fairly common commercial product? I mean, in the sense that a typewriter is or something like that? No. no. That would be three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. And then would you describe it as a rare commercial product? <laughs> I would say it was a yes. bit on the rare side. Uh, is there anything amusing or educational about what you do? <laughs> well, how do we get along now? Just a moment, we've got to have a small conference. <laughs> Think they'll ever come back? <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> what have you decided? Picture of a man who loves his work. <laughs> uh, we have agreed in the uh, committee meeting that uh, actually that uh, it could be called educational. Yes, you go on, Mr. O'Gallagher. Uh, is this product inanimate? Uh, that would make it a uh, four down and six to go. I asked Mr. that backwards, didn't oh, I? That's a very interesting answer. Mr. Sir. Uh, if it's an animate product, would the uh, animate product be a human being? Oh, that no. would make it she five down it. and five to go, Miss Francis. She doesn't have to sell them. Now, does it belong uh, to the animal kingdom? Yes. Uh, does it belong to the four-legged animal kingdom? Yes. Did <laughs> <laughs> not know whether it had four legs, and he only didn't know because he wanted to have another conference. <laughs> being caught. <laughs> you go on, is, uh, uh, is the reason that John was dubious because this animal is very often seen standing on its hind legs? Uh, animal often seen standing on its hind legs. Uh, that's a small conference. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> there they go. The panel would like to confer mm. so. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I must admit that um, uh, Miss Stephanie is the expert, and Miss Stephanie says that um, it would not be right to describe this animal as standing on its hind legs. Well, if an animal is standing up at all, it would be on its oh, rear yeah. end in some... <laughs> 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 well, I would stand on its front legs, it's pretty silly. <laughs> Miss Stephanie, is, uh, since you have uh, qualified uh, the context in which we approach this matter, she agrees with you now. Will you continue, Miss Francis? <laughs> I must have very short legs. Uh, is, this a, is this animal 
uh, does it belong in any way to the monkey or um, ape family? Yes. Uh, is it uh, in the smaller category, the monkey family? Yes. yes. Is it a monkey that you have nothing yes. to do with? Now what do that... And you work for a non-profit monkey organization? Yes. yes. Oh, there are an awful lot of monkeys in that. <laughs> Uh, does your job have anything to do, or was it already decided it had nothing to do with health? If I, I'm sorry if I'm repeating. Uh, no. No, that... Was the health question asked at all? No. no. Does this uh, 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 monkey have anything to do with health or experimentation in any way? Yes. Uh, do you do this work for uh, hospitals or doctors in a, uh, a non-profit making uh, hospital? Or a laboratory, a scientific laboratory of some kind? Conference coming up? Well, actually, there's a, there's a moot issue here. I think, uh, you mean, does the um, relationship of the monkey to fundamental purpose uh, have a relationship to hospital doctor, etc.? Is that it? Well, experimentation. Yes, we'll give you that, yes. I can't imagine what kind of a foundation would... Do you work for some kind of a foundation? Yes. Uh, would it be anything like, um, uh, what is that? Uh, may I have a conference from You may have 20 seconds. Is it a university? Where is she from, North Carolina? Mm -hmm. South Carolina. South Carolina. Yes, but what is the uh, animal experimental group called? Oh, dear. I don't know. The University of North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll get off. Are you connected with the University of North Carolina? No. Yeah. No, and actually, South Carolina. South Carolina. <laughs> no, not even South Carolina. Actually, you've, you've got it to all purposes, but I think you're moving in such a rarefied atmosphere that we will, to save time, give uh, Miss Stephanie the full prize and say that to all intents and purposes, you came so close that you got it. She actually manages a monkey farm for the March of Dimes Foundation. Oh, ah, And oh, yes. they supply the monkeys to hospital doctors for research work. I see. Uh, that means you have won the full prize. It also means that... Uh, we are all to be reminded of something very important. This is March of Dimes month, right up through the 31st day of January. There isn't any march that you can join that can give you so much satisfaction and sense of service as joining the March of Dimes. If you haven't done it in this month of January yet, get out and do it first thing this week, won't you? Because it'll mean a lot to you and to those to whom you are giving the money for the good work to be carried on. And may we thank you for being our guest. It was awfully nice having you with us. Good night. Glad to Very nice going, panel. And now for the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. Uh, my friends on the panel would certainly recognize our guest on site, so we've provided them with blindfolds. And the blindfolds are all in place, panel? Yes, yes we are. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> of our mystery challenger, we get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with Miss Arlene Francis. Well, after that very warm welcome, I'm sure that our mystery guest has a personality and face that is familiar to the audience. Would you consider yourself a performer? To a certain extent, yes. Oh. Well, good. Would I you would be say yes, unqualifiedly, yes, I'll say that. You are a performer. Are you a performer in uh, pictures? I have been, yes. Have you also performed in the theater? That's true. Well, would you be considered a leading man? My mother does. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good enough for me. Well, I will let it ride at that. <laughs> you go ahead. Uh, would you, uh, uh, would you consider, have you been in pictures or the theater for, let us say, over 10 years? Yes. Are you primarily known for one of these arts rather than uh, all of them? I mean, are you known better for the theater or pictures or television or radio? Oh, just a little of each. Would you consider yourself a, uh, uh, a romantic leading man? My mother. <laughs> <laughs> one down and nine to go. <laughs> I think that uh, we might mislead them if we let that stand. Mr. Allen. Well. 
First of all, I'd like to ask, how's your mother? <laughs> well and healthy. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, are you by any chance, uh, do, you, do you perform as a funny man in any way? My mother thinks so. <laughs> a little of each, I'll say. Uh, yes uh, and no. I but I will, be, I will say this. I think to be completely fair, we have to admit that our guest tonight has brought a great deal of pleasure and good fun into American families. Uh-huh. Have we by any chance seen one of your pictures uh, locally in the last six months? I don't believe so. No, I don't think so. Not uh, in the last six months. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, do you do anything besides act? <laughs> His mother thinks so. <laughs> you mean, Miss uh, Kilgallen, sing, dance, etc.? Or anything. Um, uh, Breathe. Paint, sculpt. Uh, sing, dance. He's... No, really, I don't. He doesn't sound as though he's disguising his voice, and if he's so famous, I don't know why he wouldn't have to disguise it. Is that your natural voice? Well, I believe so. Yeah, and uh, that's three down and seven to go, Miss Terry, because there was no specific other talent that was made note of. So let's make it three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Well, the fact that we <clears throat> don't recognize your voice and that you are so well known makes me wonder if your principal fame may have been achieved in silent movies. <laughs> no. <laughs> Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. <laughs> Uh, it was stated by John uh, that you have brought a great deal of pleasure uh, to uh, the American people. I am wondering if you also have, uh, and their response was very warm and immediate, and I wonder if you also uh, have been a uh, gentleman that has traveled to Europe and entertained the troops. Well, just a little bit. Uh, did you... Uh, are you primarily known for any unusual feature? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> we have 20 seconds. <laughs> Take a dive, Miss Arlene. Well, if uh, you're the person I think you are, you have entertained the troops a great deal. You were brilliant in the stage production of Harvey, and you're a baseball <laughs> enthusiast of the first water, and your name is Joey E. Brown. Joey E. Brown, is right. All right, panel. Let's see, we've got a little time left. Let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Matilda Link, is that right? How are you? All right, Miss Link, will you tell us where you're from? New Britain, Connecticut. New Britain. Well, our time is very short, so I'll ask you, please, to walk down in front of the panel, turn right around and walk back again. All righty, right back here now. And now, panel, on the basis of that very quick look and the fact that Miss Link has written her name and you have seen it writ, let us have our free guesses, which we begin with Miss Kilgallen. Teaches dramatics. Mr. Sir. Teaches dancing. Miss Francis. The leading firewoman. Mr. Allen. <laughs> she uh, fires women. <laughs> no, nobody has it. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Miss Link. At the same time, we'll tell them what her occupation is. <laughs> panel, you've got to dig. All right, we have to move very quickly now. We have only about a minute and a half to go to see how quickly you can dig this up. Miss Lank, you know the rules. Every no answer, five dollars. We keep the record here. Ten knows you won the game. All right, Miss Lank is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Miss Kilgallen. Uh, you are working for a profit, I presume? Yes. Is there a product involved in what you do? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. You perform some kind of service? Yes. Is this prefer service performed for human beings? Yes. Are uh, the human beings of both sexes? Yes. Are there ever children included in these yes. services you perform? Is there any kind of instruction that you give in your services? Yes. Would this instruction be given in one place? In a school or uh, some yes. room? Is it in a school? N no. no. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Would your work be considered <laughs> creative in any way? Mm, no. No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, is the laying on of hands involved in any way in your work? The use of hands, yes. The, the use of hands, I see. Uh, do you employ tools like brushes or pencils or something like that? 
Tools, yes. yes, I see. Oh. Is it, uh, am I correct in assuming that these tools are not brushes? Brushes? Yes. I'm yes. correct in assuming that. Uh, are they mechanical tools in the sense that a pliers is, or a screwdriver, something of that sort? <laughs> Pardon me. Well, happily, time just ran out. So we'll have to tell you, and Miss Lank will get the full prize by default because time ran out. Miss Lank is a chiropodist, and thank you all very much for trying so hard, and thank you for being our guest. It's nice to have you on what I like. Good night. And now, just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to give you a preview look at one of our guests whose line our panel is going to be asked to try and identify on next week's program. Next week at the same time, our panel of experts will be asked, what's my line by this man? Would you know what his occupation is? Could you spot his line? Well, for the answers to these and a good many other interesting questions, be sure to join us again next Sunday night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when, once again, Stop It presents What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and the time of our weekly series and don't forget, What's My Line is on CBS Radio on Wednesday nights. Until then, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Dennis. I'm going to be spending the night wondering what's instructive about a chiropodist. Good night, Arlene. <laughs> Let you know what to, where to put your best foot forward. Good night, Steve. Good <laughs> night, John. And good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. <laughs> This has been a Mark Hudson, Bill Todman production. In association with the CBS Television Network.